Hello guys, Mr. Danamon2050 here, welcome to another video, and in today's video guys I'm going to be bringing you some game benchmarks with a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 760. This card, uh, this card guys, is, is around £200 in the UK and about $250 in the US. Now I'm going to bring you some game benchmarks on about 7 games, and uh, yeah, this is going to give you an idea of what kind of performance you would expect if you was buying a card like this. And uh, yeah, stuff like that. So, all the games that I'm going to be testing today, guys, are going to be on maximum settings at 1080p. Just a little overview of my system. I have a quad-core i5 running at 3.2 gigahertz, 8 gig of RAM, uh, overclocked 1,600 megahertz, and then a 240 gig which can Cronus SSD, which has a read and write of about 500 megabytes plus. So, in Battlefield 4, guys, on Ultra, we have 55 frames per second. It's just under 60 frames, so it doesn't look like you can kind of enable V-Sync. But 55 frames with a 760, a maximum setting for Battlefield 4 is pretty good, to be honest, because Battlefield 4 looks very good on Ultra. It really, really does. And as you can see in the background, you've got some gameplay there. And, uh, yeah, I personally kind of enjoy Battlefield, so, you know... With it looking so good, um, you know, it, it really does make the game feel awesome, you know I mean? Anyway guys, moving on, uh, Medal of Honor Warfighter. On this game, maximum settings, I'm able to get 74 frames per second. So, the 760 does really put up a really good fight here, and 74 FPS. You can definitely enable your uh, 60 frames per second V-Sync, and yeah, you can have a really nice, smooth gaming experience with that. And uh, yeah, Medal of Honor Warfighter looks good. I know I can hear that, but uh, yeah, 74 FPS, very nice indeed. Moving on guys, to Resident Evil 5, we get 99 frames per second on maximum settings, all filters, anti-aliasing, all turned up to maximum. All tests are done at max at 1080p, but uh, yeah, Resident Evil 5 is quite old now, but I've still got it on my PC, and, it's, and it has an actual built-in benchmark tool, so this is the absolute uh, average frame, frame rate, you know, 99 FPS, very, very nice, and uh, yeah, Resident Resident Evil 5 actually looks good comparing it's quite an old game, but it's very nice to play the game with so many frames. It really, really is. Moving on, guys, to Bioshock Infinite. On this game, we get 78 frames per second. With the last drivers that I were using, I barely got 60, but uh, now, you know, with the new drivers, um, I'm able to get 78 frames per second. You know, the GTX 760 does really, really put up a good fight with this game as well. 78 FPS on this game with Ultra, you know, my... Maxed out settings, it looks very, very good indeed. Then moving on guys to more kind of recent titles. Um, Titanfall, uh, with everything on maximum, apart from the textures on very high, which you got to have a 3 gigabyte graphic card to run the textures on insane, so everything on ultra apart from the textures which are on very high. With Titanfall we get 63 frames per second. I've noticed it does drop down to 40 sometimes, uh, when things load or stuff goes boom literally. But uh, yeah, 70 FPS, uh, not 70, 63 sorry. Uh, very respectable frame rate with it being a, a, a new game, but at the end of the day, Titanfall uh, is a Source Engine game. But uh, nevertheless, it do it does look very, very good. I'll give you that. Now moving on, guys, the Metro Last Light. We get 24.7 frames per second. Now this guy is a demanding game, and from what I've actually, you know, for me being playing it and me being doing a walkthrough for YouTube recently, if you actually turn the game down from Ultra and put it on High, you will get 60, um, 60 plus FPS. So it's. Uh, yeah, it is playable, you just got to turn it down to high settings. Now, lastly guys, Minecraft, 147 frames per second. This is everything on maximum with the standard texture pack. And uh, just for me being curious, when you turn all the settings down to low, you actually get over 200 frames, frames per second. So it's, um, yeah, very, very respectable. Anyway guys, I hope this video has been informative for you, and if you're planning on getting a 760, it really does put up a good fight in all games, and it's a very nice graphic card for 1080p gaming, with most of your games being able to run on rather high or, you know, ultra. So, uh, yeah, that'll kind of conclude the video. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Please feel free to like, comment, and also subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.